Right, Photo Restoration 101. You can see this picture here is um, it's in pretty good physical shape. All the corners are there. There's no massive areas missing. Um, but over time it's faded. Getting this back to something approaching viewable is pretty easy. Um, I'm using Photoshop CS4 just because that's what I've got. But all the things I'm going to show you, you can do in any other photographic um, thing, GIMP or Photo Studio or whichever. Uh, the buttons will be in different places, but they're all pretty much, they'll be there. Um, the first thing to do is to make a copy of this, a new layer, which is a keyboard command. I like the keyboard command. It is uh, Control and J. So you see there now we'll have a copy to work with the copy. Don't work on the original. Otherwise, if you make a mistake, you've got to load everything back in. You lose everything. It's always best to work on copies. It's called non-destructive editing. Um, right. So now we're working on a copy of the copy. The next thing I want to do is take away the color cast, the brownie color cast, and work in black and white. So all we do here is image adjustment, black and white. There, yeah, that's taken the yellowiness away. So what we're left with, everything is sort of a grey. In a proper black and white photo you have whites and blacks. Um, we're going to look at what we've got to play with by getting the graph of the grey levels. Um, in levels there. Now I'm not using a mouse here, I'm using the graphics tablet which is a pain for moving the cursor about because it's dead sensitive. So that's why my menu selections are all over the place just for now. But this levels, this black area here shows you all the colours or grey scales which are in this image. You can see here is dead black, there is dead white, and there is nothing dead black. There's nothing until we get to about a mid grey. There are no dead whites, there's no white colour until we get to sort of like a three quarters grey. What we can do, you can press auto, which will auto sort of like spread this out so you get a black and you get a white there which isn't bad but you see the little gaps in the thing that I've come about there that's called posterization it's not fantastic um, so we'll cancel that what I prefer to do is do it manually move this black slider along until it's just touching the start of the curve there move the white along until it's just shown the end of the curve there. Now this one in the middle is your mid grey point and you can slide this back and forwards to get you the best sort of contrast. Ideally I would be doing this on a larger screen. I'm doing this on my laptop which is not the, the full size screen. Photoshop really needs a massive screen and the other computer is too slow to do it on. I could plug the monitor in but it's too much of a clout. So they just do it to your eye. Um, that looks reasonable. So I'll OK that. And there straight away we've got from that to that with just the slide and just bring them bring up your blacks and bring in your whites. Now because
once we've done that that's complete the next thing we'll do is sharpen the image up a little bit so we'll make another copy of that Control J now I'm working on this layer 1 copy which is a copy of what we've just corrected the one the selection that's in most of the other programs is unsharp mask which I don't really like um, well I used to use it all the time until the smart sharpen came along but I'll show you this one first you've got three selectors the amount which is the strength of the sharpening radius of pixel a pixel is just the, the dot which the screen is made up of or the picture is made up of threshold is how many colors or gray scales get affected it, there's a lot of science behind it which I don't want to go into but the best thing to do with this again is just to experiment as to what looks best to your eye you see there with everything up to its max it'll look horrible is do a lot of computational things it is quite graphic well graphics intensive obviously it is a very intensive thing to do so your computer will probably slow to a crawl when it does this kind of thing there you see when you've got a full shot and you've got all these white burnt out areas that's because the computer's done its algorithm and maths to see what's sharp and what's sharp it, it doesn't work at, at full so that's why you've got to use your eye to have a guess is do what you think looks the best see that's too far because you've got the burnt out highlight again so if we'll just bring that back when you do sharpness it's always a trade off between sharpness and noise oh, you can see how the image gets a little bit grainy once you start doing this process and they went um, now just for sp oh, see, let's say that's fine so we'll ok that because you've got the layer underneath here which is still unsharpened if you like you can flick between the two to see what you've done if you just click on the little eye there which hides and reveals the layer so that's sharpened that's unsharpened you can see just a little bit especially around here and around the darker bits there you see a face there and there and around the collars it's it's not fantastic but it's unsharp mask and it, that's what it does it, uh, it, it's not the it's better than it was but it's not fantastic the, the smart sharpen a smart sharpen is better which I will show you because I'll, I'll delete that and if we copy it again control J that's the beauty of having the layers you see if I didn't have layers I would have to do I would have to load all this in again and start it from the beginning mm, ba, 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 ba. where is it where is it where is it where is it there sharpen smart sharpen it's pretty much the same thing but here you've, you, you've got the types of blur that you want to remove this Gaussian blur which is sort of like a general all over randomy blur lens blur is caused by the lens on the camera motion blur is if something was moving and say you had somebody walking across um, slightly that would move the head you can sort of 
see which way it was moving and forget that, forget that. I'll show you how to do that later because it is a separate thing. Gaussian blur is the one for this because it is like a sort of general all over blurriness. And then you've got your mount and your radius and do it by eye again. And see with this one you don't seem to get the, the burning out of the, the white areas as much unless you take it to extremes. You can see as it gets sharper it does get dottier, noisier. Um, so it's a trade off again between the two. And it's just your personal preference as to how sharp you get. There's no right or wrong. It's just which looks the best. You just slide and play. Let's see which is the best. So just do a devil one more. Okay, that will flick between the two. So that's sharpened. That's unsharpened. You can see, you can see, you can pick out the features a lot easier, but there's a lot more noise, black dots, and interference. It looks like. So there's your trade-off. What do you want? The soft, out of focus, or slightly in focus? And what we can do as well, because it, these are literally layers on top of each other, we kind of we don't want it quite as sharp as that just take the opacity down it which will show up the layer underneath the softer layer so you see there it's gone there we'll just we'll just bring in the sharpness in slightly by sliding that layer up um, so if we're happy with that we don't need the background layer anymore so unselect that to save it, we we'll need to merge all these three layers down into one layer. So what we do there is our layer, flatten image, which will take it all down to one. Discard hidden layer, it just means because we've hidden the bottom layer, it won't bother saving that. So we'll OK. So now, see, we've got one background layer to work with. I prefer monochrome pictures like this, as in black and white. I don't like the the tint which is on them much. Because to start with it wouldn't have had it. That is that's been added on either by age or by a chemical process after it's been printed in black and white. But it's easy enough to put back on. Um there's a few ways of doing it. In all of these programs there's more than one way to do something. Which is it gets confusing sometimes. Because you do you go halfway into doing it one way that you come at it from the other angle, you do it either half other halfway from the other way. It's like, ooh, it's wrong. It's not wrong, it's just you've done it wrong. Um But to add the colour back here. Here you've got photo filters. And you select which one you want. There's the sepia one there. And you just pick how dense you want it over the photo. And yeah, there you see it's coming back. And it goes away. It's coming back. Um, and that's it. With the um, thing back. sharper. It's better than it was, but it's, it's not 100% fantastic, but this tutorial was just to show you how to bring out the contrast. Um, so what we'll do there is flatten it again in the one thing. Flatten image, diddly-doo, diddly-doo. There you are. Done. 